بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلوات الله وسلامه على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد المصطفى وعلى آله ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وما بعد إن شاء الله we would look at words in the Arabic language from the perspective of al what we call al bina'u wal i'rab whether the word is mabni whether it's fixed the word mabni means built or structured wal mu'rab means analyzed al mu'rab so all words in the arabic language are either mu'rab meaning they change at the ending they are analyzed the word changes or the word is mabani, it's built or it's fixed, it's unchangeable, it's structured like that. And we'll give examples as we proceed. This study of the changing of the last vowel or the ending of the word, sometimes it's not the vowel that changes, but the ending that changes. And the reasons for the variation is the crux of what Arabic grammar is about. So when you look at a, a sentence in the Arabic language, for example, if we were to say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, the reason why we say Alhamdu, why we put a single bomba there, instead of saying Alhamdi or Alhamda, or saying Alhamdun, for instance, or Alhamdin or Alhamdan, those are all wrong. But the reason why you don't say that, why they're wrong, um, is, is what grammar is about. Lillahi. Why did we say he? Why did we not say who? Why did we not say ha? Rabbil. Why did we say Rabb, Rabbil? We didn't say Rabbal or Rabbul Alameen. Why did we say Ala Alameen and we didn't say Ala Alamun? Uh, that is all uh, what Arabic grammar is about. So what we want to identify in this section is which words are fixed at the ending. They don't change. They're built like that. They remain like that. They're always like that. Uh, if it changes, it's a different word. If, they, if you find like a word is similar, it's a different word. It's not the same word. <clears throat> is uh, this section, uh, what this section is about. Al-Mu'arabu wal-Mabni. Al-Kalimatu al-Mu'arabatu. Wal-Mabniyatu, words that are Mu'araba, that are analyzed, that are changed at the ending, and words that are Mabniya, they are not uh, analyzed, they are fixed at the ending. The difference between, that's what grammar is about. Sarf is actually, don't care about the ending of the word, whether the word is Mabni or Mu'arab, is not the, the, the um, focus of what Ilm al-Sarf is about. Ilm al-Sarf is about how the word was made. Huh? what letters are in the word and what vowels are on that letters uh, uh, on those letters and what pattern is that word on that's ilm al-sarf so al-mabni so let's do the arab of al-mabni first uh, the definition of al-mabni first and then the definition of al-mu'arab al-mabni ma la yataghayyaru akhiruhu so we say the word that is mabni is the word that the ending does not change. Uh, so there are a few categories of words that are always uh, mabniya. They are al afalu al maabiyatu wal amr, past tense verbs. Al afalu al maabiyatu, past tense verbs, and we would study past tense verbs in their own and also uh, command form of the verbs are always mabniya. They're always fixed at the ending. They don't change. We don't do i'rab on them. Also al-huruf. All the huruf are, uh, are mabniya. So if you were to look at words, all words must either be, we, we agreed, must be af'al, they must be verbs, asma or huruf. So we have here, uh, the huruf, all of them are mabniya, so that leave only the af'al and the asma. The af'al are three categories, past, uh, present, uh, or what we call present in English, we call it al-mudari'ah in Arabic, which includes present and present uh, continuous and future. 
and the command form of the verb, these three forms of the verb. So two of them, past and command, are all mabniya. That leaves only present tense. Verbs are fi'al af'al al So now what is remaining is some asma are mabniya. Uh, for example, all asma uh, ishara, uh, demonstrative pronouns, are all uh, fixed. They don't change. Except when it, when they are dual, uh, uh, and some present tense verb are mabniya. So we have all past tense verb, all command form of the verbs, all the huruf, some asma, and some of the present tense verb are all mabniya. The ending would not change; they're fixed. They would always remain the same. Al muarabu ma yatagayyaru akhiruhu. The mu'arab is the word that the ending changes because of the variations of the actions that are performed upon them. So when we, when we look at Arabic grammar and we look at a word, we say there's an, the, the word occupies the grammatical position in the sentence and an action was done on it. Uh, for example, just give you a brief example of what that means. And inshallah, I didn't give you an example of al mabni as yet because we'll give you many of them uh, as we go along. al mu'arab um, we'll give you examples. But I want to tell you uh, first, uh, what does it mean, action performed upon them? For example, uh, if we were to say that uh, alhamdu lillahi, alhamdu is mubtada and it's marfu, it has a dhamm. At the ending, it changed. And lillahi lam harfu jarrin, it doesn't change, it's always li. And the word Allah, we don't say Allah is majroor. We say the word Allah, lafdul jalala, is uh, majroor or majroora. Um, and it changed at the ending. So we say an action of jarr was performed on the word Allah. The action of jarr. Yeah, because it's majroor. Um, that's what we mean by action or grammatical functions that were performed on them. Examples of the asma that are mu'araba, that change at the ending, are uh, I use the word azab here <laughs> as a, as example in both the asma and the afal present tense verb to show you the changes. So you can just compare. So in this ayah, I'll just look at the words themselves and, and I'll re read the ayat. Azabun. Here we have Azaban. Here we have Azabin. We have Al Azabu. Al Azaba. Al Azabi. So we saw the one word Azab, which means punishment, in six variations here at the ending. We're only looking at the ending. We're not taking into consideration the Al at the starting. Because um, we're looking at A'rab, which, which uh, only look at the ending of the words. So we say A'zabun here is marfu'a. Walahu ma'azabun azimun. It's marfu'a and it has dhamma. Al-azabu, it's marfu'a and it has a single dhamma. It has only one dhamma because it has the alif and lam at the starting, and we'll study that in its own section. A'zaban, it's mansub, it has fatha. Al-azaba. It is uh, mansub, it has fatha. Bi'adhab bin, it is majroor, it has kasra. Min ala adhabi, it is majroor, it has kasra. It changes at the ending. Therefore, the word adhab is mu'rab. That is what we want to derive uh, from this. I'll just read the verses quickly and translate them. Walahum adhabun azimun, and for them is a huge punishment. Fala yu khuffaf wa anhumu la adhabu walahum yunsarun. And the punishment would not be eased for them, nor would they be helped. Of course, this is speaking about people in hell. And as for those who disbelieve, I will punish them a severe punishment. And when those who were followed disassociate themselves from those who follow them and they see the punishment, this is Yawm Al-Qiyamah. فأمطر علينا حجارة من السماء أو اتنا بعذاب أليم. This is the words of 
some of the uh, the the polytheist, specifically al nadr ibn al harith uh, he said o oh allah pour upon us uh, stones meaning of punishment from the heavens or bring to us a painful punishment meaning if this is really the truth he's mocking at islam and at rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he got what he asked for anyway فلا, فلا do not assume that, that they would be saved from the punishment allah speaking about the uh, disbelievers some verbs that are mu'raba and i use the same azab or word that is derived from azab yu'adhibu azaba yu'adhibu means the punishment azaba he punish yu'adhibu he punishes yu'adhibu is present tense verb and it's mu'rab because it changes at the end i give you three examples here in these three verses yu'adhibu li yu'adhiba hum yu'adhiba hum so here it's marfu it has dhamma here it's mansub it has fatha and here is majizum it has uh, sukun i'll read the verses and translate them yu'adhibu man yasha'u he punishes whomever he wishes excuse me wa ma kana allah li yu'adhibahum wa anta fihim and it is not for allah to punish them while you are amongst them oh by the way this is connected to that same ayah up up here where another ibn al-harith prayed for punishment and allah did not punish them because rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was amongst them so the presence of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in makkah was protection from for the disbelievers from the punishment that they rightfully deserve and they ask for and they beg and which they consequently uh, received allah says qatil qatiluhum yu'adhibuhum allah bi aydikum this is in surah at-tawbah fight them wage war against them this is talking about the munafiq uh, excuse me about the mushrikun in makkah who broke the covenant with the muslims uh, the sulh al-hudaybiyah that existed between them and the muslims were kind of reluctant to wage war and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded them and said uh, wage war against them allah will punish them with your hands you azib whom allah you azib is majizum and we will see what are rafu what al nasbu what al jarru and what al jazmu is in the coming section inshallah so those are words that don't change and words that change afal al madhi wa al amr that don't change uh, for example um, i probably should have included an example here if we were to say kataba uh, kataba kataba is always kataba it never changes it's fixed that's a past tense verb oktub oktub would always be oktub that is how it is it's structured like that it's built on that sukun that's a command form of the verb and huruf we have like fi and min and so on some asma that are mu'raba are words like uh, al mustafa or mustafa for instance uh, mustafa mus ta fa we say this word is mabniya it would always be mustafa for example if i were to say ja a mustafa ja a mustafa mustafa would be marfu' oh, excuse me in a state of rafa if we were to say ja a <coughs> ja a mustafa uh, this means mustafa came mustafa here is the fa'il we will study all of this in details i'm giving you a lot of stuff right now just to pay attention to one lesson i'll identify that lesson don't uh, be overwhelmed by the rest of it i'm just mentioning it and it and and they would uh, will be clarified later uh, i will explain with another example inshallah let me say ra'aytu i'll come back to that example ra'aytu mustafa mustafa and nadartu ila mustafa na dartu ila mustafa so we say mustafa Fa. sorry <clears throat> so jaa mustafa jaa is a past tense verb it's fixed mustafa is the fa'il it's in a state of rafa but it's mabni ra'aytu mustafa mustafa is the object of the verb i saw mustafa so mustafa is the one i saw he's the object al-maf'ulu bihi and it's in a 
state of nos. We don't say Mustafa is mansub. We say it in a state of nos because it's fixed. It's always Mustafa. When I thought to Ila Mustafa, Mustafa is uh, is in a state of jar because of the preposition Ila in front of it. Uh, but it's fixed. It always uh, has an al this alif maqsura the ending. So al asma al maqsura kulluha mabniya. The the Asma that ends with the alif that is written as a ya that are maqsura is an example of asma that are uh, that are mabniya. <coughs> so we say uh, words uh, change at the ending. What what are the potential or possible variations or changes? that take place at the ending. What are the i'rab? What are the halatul i'rab? The states of grammatical analysis. So there are four states. All words that are mu'raba. Kullu al-kalimati al-mu'rabati imma an takuna marfu'atan aw mansubatan aw majuratan aw majizuma. All words that are analyzed, that change at the ending must be marfu'a, which generally means it has a dhamma, or majurur, or sorry, mansub, which means it has a fatha at the ending, or majurur, it has a kasra generally, or it has a sukun. The asma have three. The asma have three states. And the af'al have the verbs have three states. <clears throat> they share two of them. So two of them are common, and one is unique for each of them. So the two that are common, I have a little chart that I presented here. Where's that chart? <clears throat> here. Um, so let me finish the section first. I'll come back to that. The asma and present tense verbs have two states in common. The asma is unique in one and the present tense verb is unique in one. Now I'll tell you what the states are and what they share in common and what they're unique in. So the four, the four states are, we say the word is marfu' or in a state of raf or halat al rafa. The word is mansub or in a state of nas. It's majurur or in a state of jar. Majzum or in a state of jazm. There is no equivalent for these in English, so there's no point in attempting to translate these words. Words are not marfu in English, or mansub, or majroor, or, or majizum. Words are fixed in English. All words are mabniya in English. <laughs> so if I were to say to you, uh, uh, I saw the boy, or the boy came, or I looked at the boy, in each of those cases, the boy, B-O-Y, 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 it does not change. But in Arabic, it would change. The word boy would change in those three sentences. We would say, Ja'a waladun, the boy came waladun. It's marfu, it has dhamma. Or, ra'aytu waladan, I saw a boy. We changed it from waladun to waladan. We made it mansub. Or, nadartu ila waladin, I looked at a boy, uh, waladin. So from waladun to waladan to waladin, it changed marfu'a, mansub, majroor. In English, boy, boy, boy. So we don't have states of i'rab in English so that I go translating these words for you. That's why and throughout this course, I would just say marfu'a, mansub, and majroor. And that's what you have to say. Anyone attempting to say anything in English is just confusing the hekaru out of you. Because <laughs> we don't have equivalent. Words are not marfu in English or mansub or majroor. They're all mabniya. al kalimatu bilagat al arabiya kulluha mabniya. All the words in English language are all mabniya. <coughs> They're fixed. They don't change at the ending because of grammatical position. Um, we change the word. Uh, we change the words because of grammar, but not grammatical position <coughs> in English. For example. Uh, he drinks, he drank, uh, you drink, drinks and drink, uh, singular and plural, or no, they're both singular, but <laughs> drinks and drink. Anyway, also, uh, majizum, 
So present tense verbs can be majzum. So for instance, in the word before, yu'adzib. So we say, yu'adzibu. Uh, yu'adzibu Allahu man yasha'u. Allah punishes whomever he wishes. Li yu'adziba whom Allah, so Allah can punish them. Qatiluhum yu'adziba whom Allah. So we went yu'adzibu, yu'adziba, yu'adzib. When the word has a sukun, we say it's majizum, and that happens only with present tense verbs. And we would look at that specifically now. So the sign of i'rab, the default state of, of rafa is dhamma. When the word is marfu, it would have a dhamma, the ending, the default. When it's mansub, it would have fatha. When it's majurur, it has kasra. When it's majizum, it has sukun. Uh, uh, that uh, you always do رفع with Dhamma, uh, Nasb with Fatha, Jar with Kasra, and Jazm with Sukun, and anything else which we will see in this section, Alamat, uh, Rafa, and so on, are uh, Naib. Waghayru ma dhukir yanubu, that they take the place of the Dhamma, or the Fatha, or the Kasra, or the, uh, the Sukun. <coughs> So let's look at what can be marfu mansub and majroor, what can be marfu mansub and majizum. The asma. So the asma has three states. In a state of rough, nasb or jar. Or the word can be marfu, mansub or majroor. The afa'al can be marfu, mansub or majizum. You notice here that they share two common uh, i'rab. Rafa is for both the asma and the afal. Nasb is for both the asma and the afal. So the asma can be marfu or mansub. The afal, and by afal we mean present tense verb. Afal al mudariya, excuse me, can be marfu or mansub. But al jar is only for al asma. Wal ismu qad khusisa bil jarri. That the asma are the only ones that would be majroor. Af'al are not majroor. Al-af'al al-mudariya wa ghayruha is not majroor. Majroor. Never have kasra the end because of jar. Never have kasra because of jar. And the asma are not majzoom, meaning they don't have sukun because of jazm. Hmm? They have sukun because of waq, for instance but not because of jazm. Now, what are the signs? So here we say all the words must be mu'araba, or mabniya or mu'araba. The word is fixed or it changes at the ending. If it changes, it can change to dhamma, fatha, kasra, or a sukun. The af'al can be uh, dhamma, and the asma can be dhamma. The asma and the af'al can be fatha. Only the asma can be kasra, Majroor and only the afal al mudariya present tense verb can be majizum. But what are the signs? Is it only fatha kasra dhamma? No, that's not the case. I said that original, the original sign of alamat al raf is dhamma. Huh? The original sign is dhamma, but sometimes the word can be marfu with other than dhamma. <clears throat> so I'm giving you four. Uh, four alamat al raf here, uh, five alamat al nasb, and three alamat al jar, and two alamatani lil jazmi. And this is details, and each of these we will study in its own section. I'm just uh, presenting it here to let you know that words are not always marfu with dhamma. It may be marfu with wow. So let's give you an example of dhamma. We say alamat al-rafi arba. The signs of raf are four. 
The first is a dhamma. We say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Or Allah says, Ya Rafa'ullahu alladhina amanu minkum wa alladhina utul ilma darajat. The word Alhamdu is marfu'ah. And the sign of Raf is that dhamma on the dal. When we do i'rab of this, the way we actually say this, we say Alhamdu mubtada'un marfu'un wa alamatun raf dhammatu ala ikhiri. That the word Alhamdu is marfu'ah. And the sign of Raf, it's mubtada, sorry. And it's marfu'ah. And the sign of Raf is the dhamma, the ending. The word Yarfa'ullahu, we say Yarfa'u, is fi'lun mudari'un marfu'un wa alamatun raf dhammatu ala ikhiri. That the word Yarfa'u is a present tense verb that is in a state of rafa, and the, the sign of raf is the dhamma, the ending. <coughs> That's not always the case. Sometimes it's other than that. For example, in the ayah, Allah says, Wa ula'ika humul muflihun. We say, al muflihuna is, uh, is khabar marfu'un wa alamatu rafa al wawu. This wawu is the sign of Rafa. The wow here is the sign of Rafa. So, when this word changes, it's not going to change at the ending on the noon. We don't say al-muflihunu, al-muflihunna, al-muflihuni. No, no, you don't. You say al-muflihuna, al-muflihina, al-muflihina. And the wow changes from a wow to a ya for nasb and for jaf. So here, what we want to say is, tell, is to tell you that the sign of Raf is not a Dhamma. The sign of Raf is the Wow. Allah also says, Wa'abuna shaykhun kabir. This Wow here is the sign of Rafa. <coughs> Al Alif. Qala rajulani min alladhina yakhafuna an'ama Allahu alayhim adukhula alayhim ulbab. The two men from amongst those who uh, feared Allah, they have khawf of Allah, uh, they believe in Allah and they respect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and rever him. This is in the story of Musa alayhi salam with Bani Israel when they arrived at the gate of Palestine and they refused to enter. Two men was encouraging them uh, to enter. So Allah says, Qala rajulani, two men, and then Allah described the two men, min alladhina yakhafun, amongst those who uh, feared <clears throat> and the ayah continues. The way we analyze this, we say qala fi'alun madin mabni ala al fatha. We say the word qala is mabni. It's built, it's fixed with a fatha. Rajulani is fa'ilun marfu'un wa alamatun raf al alifu. That alif there is the sign of rafa. Yeah, it's not the it's not the kasra and the noon. Because this word, the way it changes. It would change from Rajulani to Rajulaini, Rajulaini. And we never say Rajulanu, Rajulana, Rajulani. Nope, that noon there is, is, is fixed. It's always a noon, a, a, a kasra. But the i'rab is done on this alif here, the, the, the second to last letter, just like in the second to last letter, Muflihun. Just like that, this is dual, two men. Rajulani mean two men. So when we analyze this, we say Rajulani fa'ilun marfu'un wa alamatu raf al alifu. So the, the sign of raf is the alif. Sometimes the sign of raf is what we call thubutu noon or ithbatu noon. For example, Allah says, فَآخَرَانِ يَقُومَانِ مَقَوْمَهُمَا This is an ayah from Surah Al-Ma'idah in which Allah is talking about uh, witnesses or having witnesses when someone is traveling and he's dying uh, and he wants to write his will. He has two witnesses. And if you were to have two witnesses who broke their covenant, Allah says, another two will take their place. يَقُومَانِ مَقَوْمَهُمَا so we say, يَقُومَانِ فَعْلٌ مُضَارِعٌ مَرْفُوعٌ وَعَلَامَةُ الرَّفَعٌ النون. This noon here, the noon with kasra is the sign of rafa. Or thubut noon. Because the way this word change is يَقُومَانِ or لَمْ يَقُومَا or لَنْ يَقُومَا In the 
two latter cases. Uh, they are uh, mansub and majizum bi fin noon. They become mansub by eliminating the noon and majizum by eliminating the noon. Hence, it is marfu by the presence of the noon or the thubut to noon, the moon, noon remaining there. Let me summarize this, simplify it. So words change at the ending and they are marfu'a sometimes. And the sign of that rough is generally the dhamma, but not always. Sometimes as in this word, it can be a wow, or it can be the alif, or it can be the noon. So we say, عَلَامَاتُ رَفْعِ أَرْبَعَةٌ وَهِيَ أَضَّمَّةُ أَوِ الْوَاوُ أَوِ الْأَلِفُ أَوِ النُّونُ As in these examples. <coughs> النصب, the words that are mansoor. عَلَامَاتُ النَّصْبِ خَمْسَةٌ The signs of nasb are five. So by default, the, the word is mansub and the sign of nasb is fatha. But sometimes it can be an alif, or it can be a kasra, or it can be a ya, or it can be the elimination of the noon. And there is no, there is no uh, sixth. So al-fatha, in a very simple example, in Surah Al-Fatiha, Allah says, Ihdina sirata al mustaqim We say here, I don't want to do the analysis of the entire sentence, I'll just do the word. as we say it's mansub because it's maf'oolun bihi, and the, the sign of uh, nasb is the fatha and the ta. We also say the word al mustaqim is mansub because it's sifa li sirat and wa sifa tu tatba'u al mansufa fi arba wa minha al i'rab that the sifa, the adjective will follow the noun that it describes in four things. One of those four things is the analysis. They would be the same in the analysis. This is mansub, therefore this is mansub. This is mansub with fatha, and this happens to be mansub with fatha also, not necessarily so. Lan yarfa'a, lan yarfa'a. I don't know if this is an ayah in Quran, I just put it there because I put yarfa'u up here. But if we were to say lan yarfa'a, uh, we say uh, lan harful, harful nasbi dakhalata ala al-fi'al al-mudari fatansibu harful nasbi tan fi al-fi'al fi al-mustaqbal that it negates the, the possibility of the action in the future, the word lan. It's placed in front of the present tense verb and it makes it mansub. And we say, Yarfa'a fi'alun mudari'un mansubun wa alamatun nasbil fathatu ala akhiri. That the word Yarfa'a is mansub and, uh, and the sign of nasb is the fatha. So here we have both the ism and the fi'al is mansub with fatha. Okay. Sometimes it can be mansub with alif. For example, Allah says, Inna abana ala fi dalalin mubin that. The, the brothers of Yusuf said, indeed, our father is clearly astray. They are talking about the fact that, uh, that Yaqub loved Yusuf and his brother Bin Yamin more than uh, he loved them. Uh, so they said, our father is clearly astray. We say here that uh, 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 Inna is a is a, a particle that is placed half that is placed in front of the the nominal sentence to emphasize it and that abana uh, is muptada we say abana is ismu inna mansubun wa alamatu nasb al sorry al alif wa alamatu nasb al alif lianha min al asma al khamsa wa sitta that the word Abana is mansub because of inna. It's what we call ismu inna. We'll study that in its own section. And the sign of nasb is the alif. See that? Alamatu nasbi is not fatha here. It's the alif. This word, the way it changes is hadha abuna. This is our father. Inna abana. Indeed, our father. Nadartu ila abina, I looked at our father. So it changed from abuna to abana to abina. Wow, 
Alif and Ya as the sign of I'rab. These are called the five uh, words, al asma al Khamsa, the five words, and we have a section for them. And it's technically six words, but one of them is, is not used in Arabic. Hanu is not used. Al Hanu is not used in Arabic a lot, and it's nowhere in the Quran. Al Kasratu. Sometimes the sign of, uh, of Nasb is Kasra. Allah says, in al Muslimina wal Muslimati wal Mu'minina wal Mu'minati ila akhir al aya we'll say al muslimina is muqtada uh, and and it's uh, ismu inna and it's mansub wa alamatu nasb is the ya uh, in in this case which would be an which we use the same example here the ya is alamatu nasb the sign of nasb is ya but the, for this example the kasra wal muslimati we say Wow, harful atfi, wal muslimati ma'atuf, wal ma'atufu, yatba'u al ma'atuf alayhi, fil i'rab. So this is, uh, is uh, mansub, therefore al muslimat is mansub. Mansub with kasra, yes. Jama'u al mu'annaf al salim, al muslimat, al mu'minat, al qanitat, al ta'ibat, al abidat, all of that are all mansub with kasra. So this word, the way it changes is al-muslimatu and al-muslimati, never al-muslimata. It's always mansub and majrur with kasra. But here the sign of nasb is the kasra. Aliyah, inna al-muslimina, we say al-muslimina is ismu inna, it is mansub, wa alamatu nasb is the ya. This word changes from al-muslimuna, these are the Muslims. In al Muslimina, indeed the Muslims, it's Mansub. Or Nadar to Ila al Muslimina, I looked at the Muslims. So it changes from al Muslimuna to al Muslimina to al Muslimina for Nasb and Jar. So here it is Mansub with Ya. Hadfun Noon, that is for the present tense verb. The sign of Nasb sometimes is Hadfun Noon. Allah says, Fa illam taf'alu. وَلَنْ تَفْعَلُوا فَاتَّقُوا النَّارَ الَّتِي وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةِ وَعِدَّتْ لِلْكَافِرِينَ That if you do not do, and you will never do, therefore beware of the fire, the fuel of which is man and stone prepared for the disbelievers. This is an ayah in the starting or near the starting of Surah Al-Baqarah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenges the disbelievers. They say, if you think that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam concocted this Quran and attributed to Allah, then you produce the like of it. And then he said, and if you never did so in the past and will never do so in the future, you didn't do it in the past, and you will never do it in the future, then beware or fear the fire. <coughs> we say, Tafa'alu fi'alun mudari'un mansubun wa alamatun nasbi hazfun noon. What does that mean? You would learn that later. That the word is originally tafa'aluna. Tafa'aluna antum tafa'aluna. You do. Excuse me. And it is marfu'un with thubutin noon and it is majizum and uh, sorry, uh, uh, mansub and majzum. We have the same. We have jazm here. Here it's majzum with hadf al noon. But the example we want, because we're talking about alamat al nasb, is that this one here is mansub and alamat al nasb is hadf al noon, the elimination of the noon. And that alif is written there, but it's not pronounced. That alif is just written there. It's one of those secrets of the Arabic language, the ibad al noon, but it's not pronounced. It's just placed there to put an ending to the plural form of the present tense verb when it's in a state of jar or uh, in a state of nasp or jazm. Alamat al jar are three. So we saw alamat al nasp are four, al dhamma al wa al alif wa noon. Alamat al nasb are five, al fathatu al alif al kasra al ya wa noon. And we will study each of these in its own section. This is just to introduce to you. Don't be overwhelmed by this. This is just to introduce to you the broad concepts. And we will actually examine each of these 
independently and they would all combine together and make sense. In fact, it wouldn't hurt you that after you finish the entire course, come and listen to this lesson again and you say, oh, that was what he was talking about. Yeah, it would all come together. So you have to start somewhere and you will have to go forward and backwards and mention things that will come about in the future to put together the big picture. So the big picture here, I'm telling you that words change at the ending and the changing from uh, rough out to nasf to jar and the signs uh, that are there. So alamat wal jar are three, thalatha. The the original the original letter for jar or harf is al kasratu. For example, Allah says in Quran, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. All four of these asma, the word ism, the word Allah, the word Ar Rahman, and the word Ar Rahim al all majrur. By the way, for different reasons. The word ism is majrur for one reason. The word Allah for a different reason. The word Ar-Rahman for a different reason. And Ar-Rahim, the same reason as Ar-Rahman. What those reasons are, I'll mention them briefly to you. If you don't understand, just don't, worry, don't, worry, don't bother about it too much. The word ism is majrur because of harfu jarba. The word Allah is majrur because of al dafa is mudafun ilay. And the word Ar-Rahman is majrur because it is, uh, it is badal for the word Allah. Some people say sifa, but I reject sifa as being correct. Even some of the Mufassirin say that, and maybe sometime I will explain that. Maybe when we do a linguistic analysis of Surah Al-Fatiha, I'll analyze that concept in more detail, inshallah. And the word Ar-Rahim is also badal for the word Allah. So here the Kasra is the sign of, of Jar for all four of these words. Incidentally, in the first Aya in uh, in the Quran. Limana adda bismillahi rahmani rahim ayat in surah al Fatiha. And there are two opinions of that. For the ones who count bismillahi rahmani rahim as an ayah, some people do, some don't. Al uh, Sometimes the word is majrur with ya, not with a kasra. For example, in the very next ayah, Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Just quick reminder, the word alhamdu is marfu and the sign of Raf is dhamma. The word Allah is majrur and the sign of jar is kasra. The word rab is majrur and the sign of jar is kasra. The word ala alameen is majrur because of al-idhaf, it's mudafun ilay. And it's majrur. The mudaf ilay, the, pos the possessor would always be majrur. And in this case, it's majrur with a ya. This word, the way it varies is ala alamuna and Al-Alamina, Al-Alamina. So it's marfu with, with excuse me, it's marfu with wow. Uh, and it's maj, mansub and majurur with ya. Yeah. And in this case, we only consider, we're considering the jar. So we're looking at the ya, yeah, that is the sign of jar here. So the word does not change at the ending. We don't say Al-Alaminu, Al-Alamina. No, it doesn't change at the ending here. It changes on the letter before the ending that wow, originally wow, now it's a ya. Sometimes the sign of jar is fatha. <coughs> Allah says, Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al Quran. Excuse me. Shahru is mudaf. Ramadan is mudafun ilayhi. The month of Ramadan, Alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an, is the one in which the Qur'an was sent down, and the month in which the Qur'an was sent down. As a guidance to mankind, a clarification of the guidance and the criterion. That's in Surah Al-Baqarah, in the verse that is speaking about fasting, or the verses of fasting, and Ramadan. Anyway, so Ramadan is majrur bil idafa. We say Ramadan mudafun ilayhim majrurun wa alamatu al-jar al-fathatu li'annahu mamnu'un min al-sarf. The word Ramadan is, is in a special classification of words that we will study on their own. They are words that are forbidden from having tanween. And one of the, uh, one of the things that happen with those words is also uh, when they become majrur, they are majrur with fatha. And there's exception, but I don't want to give you the exception now because it really is not relevant. That would overwhelm you. All I want to tell you is the word Ramadan is majrur 
and the sign of jar is the fatha. <coughs> the sign of jar is the fatha. I want to draw your attention to something that we mentioned already, but I'm going to highlight it here. You notice when we talk about rough, I give you example for asma and afal. This is this is a ism, 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 fa'al and fa'al. When we talk about nasq, I give you example for asma, ism, ism, and I give you verb. Ism, 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 and I give you verb for nasq. But when I talk about jar, I only give you example of asma. I didn't give you afa'al. Why? Because jar is only for al asma. Al afa'al, al mudari'atu, la, la tu jarru. They are never uh, majurur. The opposite in al jazm. So you will see here, I would give you only example for present tense verb because there is no jazm. Al asma ula takunu majizuma. The asma are not majizum. Wal al jazm ala matan. Excuse me. And this is this is specifically for present tense verbs. Only present tense verbs are majizum. Because remember, past tense verb and command form of the verb are mabniya. Allah says the original symbol is a sukun and sometimes it's half, half of different things. Uh, and I'll give you two examples. Allah says, In alladhina kafaru sawa'una alayhim a'anzartahum am lam tundirhum la yu'minun. Indeed, those who disbelieve, it's the same uh, to them or upon them. Whether you warn them or you do not warn them, they do not believe. Of course, we should not misconstrue the meaning of this ayah and think that we don't have the obligation to remind the disbelievers. We absolutely do. We must do in dar because we do not know who will who will benefit from it and who will not. That we don't know. Allah knows. But Allah is saying that those who have... Uh, this deep kufr in their heart and they're blinded by their arrogance and their determination not to pursue the truth that these people are blinded by their own choices and that it, whether you warn them or you don't warn them they wouldn't believe that is to tell you that not to give up hope because we don't do that we're based on the results we do it just based on our actions and we leave the results with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but Allah is informing us here that whether you warn them or you do not warn them, they wouldn't believe. Here, lam tundirhum, we say lam harful jazmi tadkulu ala al fi'alil mudari fa tajazimu. Tundir, tundir fi'alun mudari'un majizumun wa alamatul jazmi sukun wa ala akhiri. That we say tundir is present tense verb and it's majizum because of lam. And the sign of jazm is that uh, sukun. On the ending here, home uh, is 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 a pronoun. It's mafaul and bihi mutasil and mabniyur ala sukun. Al hasf. We take two examples of verbs that are majzum and the sign of jazm is not sukun. Rather, the sign of jazm is hasf. For example, Allah says, "Wa ida qil lahum." لا تفسدوا في الأرض قالوا إنما نحن مصلحون and when it is said to them do not cause mischief in the land they say we cause peace Allah is talking about the munafiqun the hypocrites uh, <coughs> that they are being uh, forbidden this لا here is called لا أن هي تدخل على الفعل المضارع فتجزم that when you put لا أن هي the لا for forbidding on the present tense verb it makes it majzum La tufsidu, do not cause mischief. This word is originally tufsiduna, marfu'un bi thubutin noon. We saw that above. And majizumun bi hazfin noon. La tufsidu, incidentally, it's also mansub bi hazfin noon, which we saw above also. Another example, which is a different hazf, Allah says, Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashabi al-feel. Uh, did you not see how your Lord dealt with the associates of the elephant? That's talking about uh, the disbelievers in the part of the story of the elephant. Uh, we know uh, prior to the coming of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah says, Alam tara, did you not see a rhetorical question? 
لام از فعل سوري حرف جازم تدخله على الفعل المضارع فتجزمه this verb is originally ترى أنت ترى and it's مرفوع excuse me with the alif بثبوت الالف ومجزوم with حذف في الالف الالف المقصورة So here we have hath of the noon and hath of the alif, a sign of jasmine. So that uh, briefly is this lesson. Let me summarize it very quickly. All words in the Arabic language are either fixed mabni or mu'arab, they change the ending. Um, the words that are fixed are all past tense verb, all command form of the verbs, all the huruf. Some asma are fixed and some present tense verbs are fixed at the ending. Words that are mu'arab are some, most of the asma, nearly all, uh, and, uh, and the present tense verb, most nearly all of them change at the ending. Sorry, they are mu'arab. The states of analysis, when the words change, the words can change from morfu to mansub to majroor, or for the present tense verb, to majizum. The signs of those changes vary. They are originally dhamma for rafa, uh, dhamma for raf, fatha for nas, kasra for jar, and sukun for jazm. But that's not always the case. We see cases where words are marfu with wow, marfu with alif, marfu with, with the wuti noon. Uh, words are uh, are mansub originally with fatha, sometimes with alif, sometimes with kasra, sometimes with ya, sometimes with for noon. Words are majrur with kasra, sometimes with ya, sometimes with fatha. And words are majzum by default with sukun and sometimes with hazf of a letter. And that briefly is lesson uh, number two.